Sir David Ford, the last British official to serve as Chief Secretary, has called it a day. His departure marks the final chapter in Hong Kong's colonial history. In his 26 years with the Hong Kong government, Sir David has weathered many a storm. Well, there have been some pretty traumatic events, uh, starting with, the, with my arrival in, in 1967. I, I came at a time when Hong Kong was at a very bad period in its history. was in the middle of, of great turmoil, which lasted uh, between six and eight months. There was rioting in the streets, there was bombing. The dollar was under great pressure. People were leaving in very large numbers. The confidence was at an all-time low, and many people said Hong Kong could not survive. And then, I suppose, the the arrival of the Vietnamese boat people, uh, which was to pose, which was the start of, of a huge problem for us, and one which we've had to grapple with for, for a very long time, was, was very traumatic. The stock exchange crash in 1987, when the governor had to be away, and Piers Jacobs and I were, were dealing with a lot of the fallout of that, that was uh, an interesting time to say the least. And I guess the final event which, which uh, one can never forget is the, is the events of Tiananmen as we saw them on, on television. And the great sadness that that produced in everybody in, in Hong Kong. Hi, Billy. See you later. Bye-bye. Sir David joined the Hong Kong government in 1967. He became chief secretary in 1987 and held the job for seven years. It was the longest tenure in the history of that office. As chief secretary, Sir David served under two governors. It described Sir David Wilson and Mr. Chris Patton as very different in personality and in the way they work. This, however, hasn't affected his working relationship with them. Rarely did they find themselves on different sides of the net, except perhaps on the tennis court. You've got to be playing on the same side of the net, <laughs> uh, and you've got to work uh, together in terms of your, of your strategy and your tactics. You want to provide a, a good, solid uh, front so that um, so that you work together as a team, that you need lots of energy, you need to be resilient both when you're winning and when you're losing. A year after becoming Chief Secretary, Sir David shut down the Administrative Services and Information Branch. In its place, he set up the Administration Wing and the Information Wing in his office, both of them reporting direct to him in coordinating the work of the government and the Legislative Council. Every morning, key personnel would join him in a briefing session. Do we know what's happening on the private members, Bill? They have the uh, meeting uh, scheduled for this week. I'm a bit worried that uh, it could be um, rather faster than we expected. Uh, yeah. We also have to watch the timing because civil service branch are thinking of announcing yeah. some a couple of contract renewals. We want to look at the timing. Yeah. Gary, I think you might look at that. The whole impact on the announcement of the extension of those contracts at a time when they're looking at private members' bills. With the advent of representative yeah. government, Sir David believes the government officials are no longer just responsible for executing government policies. They now play a political role as well. He himself appeared to be a hardliner who was always ready to defend the government.
The omission of 21 indirectly elected members of the Legislative Council in 1985 signaled the end of official dominance in the lawmaking body. In 1987, during the debate on Sir David Wilson's first policy speech, members of the Council voiced sharp criticisms against the government. I welcome a close working relationship between this government and the Central People's Government. But we could overdo it. Indeed. While listening to the first part of your policy speech, sir, I thought it was the speech of the Chief Executive of the SAR government. Chief Secretary. When the time came for the officials to reply, Sir David lashed uh, back at Peng Cheng Hoi and Martin Lee. Saying, so it was an right unprecedented right. move, and, and the remarks he made that day so that would go down right. as his strongest ever. Mr. Lee and Mr. Pang do a grave disservice to this community by trying to undermine the credibility of this administration. If they are playing politics, they are indeed playing a dangerous game. I refute them in the strongest possible terms. Those who continue to make them in the misguided belief that they are dealing with a lame duck will discover they have a tiger by the tail and not a paper tiger either. Tiltai 不会感觉到难堪的 I think the civil service expect their representatives in the, in, the, um, in the legislative council to stand up for what they believe to be right. That applies if you're also defending government policy or if you're defending the integrity of the civil service. And so um, that's why I've never hesitated to present our case robustly. We are in the political arena. We are carrying out a political role, which is very unlike the role of, of civil servants elsewhere. And part of that political role means standing up and making one's, one's points clearly and, if necessary, forcefully. As 1997 approaches, civil servants are playing a more important political role and coming under increasing pressure. For this reason, some officials are worried that what they do for the government today may not be acceptable to the Chinese government after 1997. <laughs> 如果中方是不懂得察開的話,公務員只是政策的執行者的話,而針對有關個人的話,將來在九七年之後,不知會不會受到將來特區政府的不滿。這個是一個很強烈的格風的感覺。The job of a civil servant is to stand up for what Hong Kong believes to be right and to implement the the policies of the Hong Kong government, which after all are in the interests of Hong Kong people. Now sometimes uh, that leads to some differences of opinion with China. That's been the case in the past and I'm sure will be the case in the future. And I find it inconceivable that the Chinese government would subsequently blame them for doing that. Everything I've heard from, Chinese, from the Chinese leadership has to be to reassure the civil service. I don't, think I don't think they do need to have that worry, although 
uh, it's understandable that some, of it, some people should feel it, I guess. The Chief Secretary's primary task is to lead the Territory's 200,000 civil servants. Although the rate of attrition among them has remained below 6%, actual figures are not encouraging. In 1990, more than 9,000 people resigned. In 1991, 14,000. And last year, 11,000. More recently, even the Secretary for Education and Manpower, John Chan, and the Secretary for Transport, Yuan Kai Yin, joined the ranks of those leaving public service. Obviously, when people such as, as John Chan and K.Y. Young leave the service, that's a, a cause of regret for us. But it's a very much a personal decision for, the, for, those, for all those people, and, it's, and I don't think it's up to us to, to question their motives in going. And I don't think it's something that we should be too concerned about. Uh, if it became a flood and we lost a very large number of people, then that obviously would be a worry. But we're not in that situation.